Hey, welcome to the Commerce Hero Show. I'm here today with David Manners. Uh, community, what's your title, anyways, at Community Engineering? Um, Head yes. dude in charge. Sure, I would say community engineer. I don't know. Nice community engineer at uh, Magento Community Engineering. Previously of SightWords, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, Man, you guys have been busy, it seems, over at Community Engineering. Um, got a huge uh, – I was talking to Vinay the other day, and he made a really huge statement that um, if not for Community Engineering, you know, he probably would have kind of moved on. And uh, I thought that was pretty powerful. Yeah, it's big stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so sounds like you guys are doing some good work over there. Nice job on that. Nice work. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks. Um, what are, so like, ha, like, how do you, how do you kind of divide your time? Like, what are you organize meetups and, and, uh, contribution days and lots of others? Like, what are some of the different things that you do? Yeah. So like, uh, my role is kind of focusing on uh, Europe. Um, so that will involve, uh, reaching out to people, um, kind of, getting people involved in our Slack, in our initiatives, like our contribution days, um, talking to event organizers, seeing if we can sort out either someone coming to speak or running a contribution day alongside that. Um, uh, sometimes I am even processing pull requests at the moment. I'd like to do that more than I am currently. Um, writing docs, uh, making little videos, basically, making it as hopefully making it as easy as possible for people to contribute um so like it all boils down to kind of training and making things easy for people and that comes in many many different forms i think mm -hmm. yeah what are um like what what are your some of your biggest priorities right now as far as making making things easier within the you know for developers to contribute for documentation like what what are some of your biggest priorities right now um, so, like, at the moment, I'm just trying to get as much of the information as possible out there. Like, so we, we kind of see the same sort of things for a couple of pull requests. So that kind of highlights to me that, or the same sort of problems, I guess. So that highlights to me that maybe we're not, have, we don't have the right information out there. So quite a bit of my focus at the moment is, is um, getting, getting those little how to contribute videos or bit of documentation or whatever it is, um, as well as getting our initiatives. Like the, the team itself is only one year old, like was one year in February, I think. So just over a year old. So we're, we're kind of a bit fluid in seeing where we're, what we're doing and, and where we're going and stuff. So we've added some new initiatives, uh, such as the triage, uh, triage wanted, which is basically if if issues don't have that much um uh like if they don't have that much uh, communication or feedback going on them for a while then we'll add them to this this triage wanted list and if in a two-week period they get some feedback whether it's a uh, a like or a comment or something then we'll keep them if they don't get any more information in that kind of two weeks then we archive them as something that the community maybe isn't interested you know, so that's one of the new things that's come up and yeah, trying to get people involved, making sure it's not just code as well. Like contribution comes in many, many forms, you know, and so trying to make it not just code, but, you know, documents or validating issues or, you know, whatever it is, trying to expand people's opportunities for contribution. Yeah, totally. I was talking to Sonia and, and she was talking about how um, she had done a pull request on, uh, for docs, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and talking about you trying to make that process easier and more approachable for maybe for like non-developers and, and yeah, things like yeah. that. Um, yeah. Yeah. We want to make it as smooth as possible for people. Like it, we want to encourage people to contribute. So it's got to be, got to be easy to get into it, you know? Right, right, right. Um, wh what's the overall structure of the team? Cause I think Matt, I think of Max Ketarenko. Mm -hmm. heading it up and, and then they've made some different hires so like what's what's the what's the team right now who's uh, on the team that's a good call uh, so max uh, max heads it up he is you know over everything sort of thing and then we have uh, alexi 
Um, I'm not even going to try their surnames. I'm really sorry. Uh, Alexi heads up like the 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 GitHub side of it, the the issues and and the pull request. Um, then we have uh, Eugene Toluca, the only one with uh, a surname that I can pronounce. Eugene, he heads up like the project side of stuff, and um, so the heads up like MSI, um, Bulk ABI, that sort of stuff. Um, then I kind of float around not really tied to either of those, but kind of helping them out when possible. I do a bit of pull requests, I do a bit of projects, but mostly it's kind of European outreach, I guess, is, is the best way of putting it. Um, and then underneath uh, Alexi, uh, there's Stanislav, um, Eugene, the other Eugene, and uh, a new hire that I've forgotten his name. I've never actually met him. I feel bad. Uh, and then on nice the project outreach there. Nice out nice outreach, David. Come Sorry. on. Sorry. And then on the on the project team we have uh Vladimir, um, Igor and Valeri helping out. Oh, okay. we also have a tech writer as well, who is currently wow. focusing on the MSI project. Man, that's massive. That's a lot of people. It is um, a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. That's I think a huge ten in total. Yeah. Nice. That's a huge investment for Magento to be, you know, people can sometimes criticize, although I think it's becoming nearly impossible to, to criticize Magento's uh, investment in, in the community with, mm. with that, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a big, so, big investment. And uh, I think, it, I personally think it's paying off, so... I mean, I think so too. Like I've, I've, um, I've been really impressed with it, uh, a little bit more from a distance as I'm not, you know, doing coding directly myself and stuff like that. But what Vinay said the other day really kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, mm. and I, and, and, and I think that, um, it's, it, you know, with him saying that it's gotta be impacting tons and tons of people positively in the same way. So, yeah, um, that's yeah, cool. cool. Um, I don't take much credit for that. <laughs> right. a, lot of, a lot of everything was kind of set up before I got in, and I'm just kind of helping people out and pushing it a little further, you know? Um, right, right. Um, so you've been, how long have you been on board there? Has it been six it's months? It's October. October. So a little over six months, I guess. Nice. And are you, are you pretty involved with the, with MSI? Cause that, that's, um, Pretty. I've been wanting to talk, learn more about that, and 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 talk more. I was talking to somebody the other day, a merchant that was really interested in using that mm -hmm. for several uh, or an agency. And uh, anyway, so that's a really cool initiative. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not actually uh, heavily involved with MSI, um, but you know, it's all open in terms of it's there. If you want to see how it's going, if you want to. You know, they do weekly meetings on a Friday that are live, um, so you can you can jump in at any point. And, and my my aim and, and my hope is that even even a project like MSI, which has been running pretty much for the whole time that we've been doing community engineering, my hope is that you can jump in at any point to MSI and and not be you know like sometimes when you've got a project that's been running for a year, it's quite hard to get involved. Um, because there's a there's like a core set of people and they know everything about the project, you know. But I, what I hope and what I've been seeing um, at different events is people are coming in for the first time and they want to get involved in MSI and they can do, you know. There are tasks available for people who, you know, to get people started and stuff, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, Igor, Igor is the best bet. If you want to, I'm sure he'd be more than happy to join in with a live stream or something, but it'd be, um, he's kind of, the main go-to for that, or, or Eugene Toluca, he oversees the whole project side of stuff, so he knows he he knows pretty much he should know everything, <laughs> where everything's at, you know, at least for the status level. So where all the bodies are buried. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, nice. W what do you think makes a project uh, like you said? MSI is 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 um, a project that people can come in and contribute to right away. What what do you think it is about any open source project, whether it's Magento to itself, MSI, or others, that makes them, you know, that avoids that dynamic that you said, where like after time, it's hard for anybody to get involved. What do you think are the elements of that? 
to, to be honest, I think it's it's good um, issue management. I guess is the best way of putting it. If you if you have um, issues that are kind of organized well, whether that be uh, planned well or whether that be uh, easy to find, you know, if you go to um, if you go to the Magento GitHub and you find a label that's called "Good First Time Issues," a lot of them, anything on GitHub will have those issues, and they're kind of the ones that we've looked through and we've said, you know, we reckon most people, if this is the first one, have a have a good shower at picking up these sort of issues. So having having those sort of issues and being available as well, you know, like there's been a few times that I've had, I've had calls with people, people have reached out and they want to get involved with um, most of the time I'm dealing with the import export improvements. So a lot of it has been people like, oh, I want to get involved in that. So I'm like, okay, I'll take five minutes and we'll just have a quick chat. And pretty much at the end of those, if there's stuff that I've had to tell them that isn't in the documentation, isn't in the wiki or, or issues, then I'll make sure it is after that. You know, it's a it's a good sign like getting people involved, a good kind of test to see where you're at is uh, how much you have to explain. And if you're explaining too much, then that's where you need to change it. You know, right? Totally. Um, where do you think like the M two project is at overall in terms of being easy um, to for newcomers to get in and and start? contributing i i believe that it was uh m2 recently the most contributed project on github or the most contributed php project or something PHP like that? project yeah last year most contributed php project um that's a tricky one you know i think i think we're in a good place i think we could do better um at, at some point like we still have quite a few like bugs or refactoring stuff, which I think is quite a good way of getting in, especially refactoring. Like if you, if the system is already working and you've got test coverage and you pick up a refactoring task, then at the end of it, the system should still be working and the test should still be green, you know? So it can be quite a, a nice step in where you're not having to, maybe you're not having to design something or whatever. Um, and I think that's quite a, quite a good option. With regards to M2 at the moment, I think, um, yeah, we have those good first time issues. Uh, a lot of them could be refactoring or uh, smaller tasks. Like my, my thinking is, if you've never done contribution before, then pick up a task that lets you focus on how to contribute and not so much what you're coding. Uh, and so you can learn, and that's, that's what I try to do at contribution days. I try and make it so that the tasks are completable in, in a day as well, um, but allowing people more to learn how to contribute rather than be so focused on coding that they don't know how to format a pull request in GitHub or they, you know, they don't know how to find issues in, in GitHub and, and stuff like that. So having those things that someone can drop in and say, I've got 20 minutes, 30 minutes on a Friday, a couple hours, whatever it is, Friday afternoon, and I want to achieve something in a short period of time. Are there issues available that you can do that with? I guess that's that's kind of a good way of um, seeing what where we are, whether that's possible for someone. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, with um, I'm curious, like, okay, so a couple couple things, but so okay, so you you guys you guys have been doing some live streams. Yeah. Um, for community engineering and uh, pe people are, have been talking about how there's a lot of live streams happening and things like that. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> all <laughs> What's all that? <laughs> um, so, so how are you like, how are you liking that? Like that in that live stream interaction and, and uh, what, what do you, what do you think about all this, all this darn live streaming the kids are doing these days? Uh, for me, I think it's important to have it. Like the the thing that I love is we can uh, we can get someone in. Like when we did the PWA live stream, and we had we had James, we had Andrew, we had Eric, we had like three or four of the team involved, and someone can ask them a question and get direct feedback. You know that is that's the great thing about live streaming is if someone has a question, you can see it. They can give you the question, you see it and you give them the answer, you know? It's not, 
the feedback loop is so quick with live streaming. That's the huge benefit for me, at least. Um, in terms of how often to do it, for me personally, I, I don't want to do it that often. I know, like, I know how hard it is, man. So big respect to, to you to do it as much as you are. It, um, anything like this or, or presentation or whatever, like conference talks takes a lot out of me. You know, and the same as with live streaming, it is quite physically and mentally draining, especially to chat for over an hour. That's that's a lot of thought, you know. Yeah. And so big big props to you for doing that. <laughs> I like it, and I, I like the fact that YouTube allows you to watch it later at your leisure. You know, like you don't have to watch a live stream live. It's yeah. Completely fine, you know. Um, yeah. And it's completely fine to watch it at whatever speed you want as well. I'll just put that out there. <laughs> Welcome to watch us at 5X. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Watch it however fast you want. Man. However the heck you want to watch it. Okay. Um, how are you likely working at the Big M? Big M. The Big M is good. It's a little um, – I'm just going to turn off my notifications because my desk is buzzing. Uh, the Big M is good. It's a bit weird because I've only ever been to one office, and that was the Ukraine. Um, and because I'm working remote, I, I deal a lot with the community engineering team. Um, but outside of that, my reach in terms of inside the Big M is, is a little limited. Um, I know a few other people, especially like PWA and, um, uh, and the UX team and stuff like that, um, and the docs team as well. But other than that, it's like... Still can feel a bit like if I'm not there, people don't know me, that kind of thing, you know. Um, and so that's a that's a challenge, but uh, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm enjoying it. I never thought I would be a remote office sort of guy. And now I'm like, ooh, I'm not sure if I could go back to the office. <laughs> um, that That's an interesting topic. I'm actually – I just mm -hmm. uh, scheduled – I've been wanting to do a, a, a stream on remote work. And mm -hmm. so I have um, and do one with uh, Jen with Tax Jar, which is a totally distributed remote company. Cool. And then we're going to also pull in um, Eric with Classy Llama, big emphasis on in house. And, and they have a, a really cool uh, company culture at, at Classy that they've built out. So um, that should be neat. But, it, but I'm interested to get your thoughts on it too. Um, what because you know and it's different when you're working remotely for like you mentioned you know some of those in off you haven't been to all the offices there's different mm -hmm. dynamics when the whole team is remote versus some of the team magento's obviously been making um a number of these hires i think of you i think of uh james cowie and and others uh that are that are working sort of remote ish mm -hmm. um and so how how like what kind of things are you having to build into your daily routine to make sure that you're seeing people yeah. doing some skateboarding? What do you, what do you, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. So like the, um, the big, so I was always worried when going into remote that I would be, all my issues would be with work and not working or, you know, being distracted too often or whatever. But actually for me, I think I've kind of got a good balance on that side. And the side that I'm not so good at personally is more like, making sure I go outside the house, you know, or uh, making sure that I'm not being like just eating junk food or uh, actually communicating with people that are not my wife or my seven-year-old or my two-year-old, you know. Uh, that kind of personal connection is probably the bit that I'm missing more than, than like the work part of being in an office, if that, if that makes sense, you know. Um, so yeah. we just... I just set up, so I, I'm a big fan of following um, other remote companies. And like what we do in community engineering is remote. Like everyone we deal with is remote because it's, it's all by definition, people, basically. People, right? Exactly. It's people that aren't, aren't in Magento. So it, it's remote and um, open source, whether you want to like it or not, is, is remote, completely remote, you know? Um, and so I've been kind of, diving into how companies um, do remote only or remote first, like GitLab and um, oh, who's the other one? The guys that wrote Rework. The Basecamp. Rework. 
base camp, that's it. So looking at how they do it, their remote manifestos and stuff. And uh, last week, I, in our community engineering Slack, I installed a app called Donut. Um, and you join a channel, uh, and everyone in that channel, every two weeks, it pairs up and says, have a 15-minute call and get to know them. You know, like kind of water cooler style, coffee break, chat every every couple of weeks, just 15 minutes. You know, and I think it's the, I think it's the, I have to see that. Chat. That's it. TJ said we're using uh, donuts. <laughs> yeah, donut, I mean, that's where it comes he's, from, you know. Um, he's doing it the old fashioned way. Exactly. Gotta respect that. <laughs> uh, so that's like, that's one of the things that I, I feel could be could be better from a remote part part of it um, um but like i i have this thing where i will go to a conference and i will see like 100 people and then i'm like right i'm done for the month that's my social interaction done i'm, I'm just going home for a week and not seeing anyone you know so you got to balance it out i think but yeah that it's that side that i feel is i don't have as well rather than the work side, which was what, which is weird because that's when I started out, I, I was worried more about like being lazy and not doing my work. Whereas now I'm like, maybe I'm working a bit too much or maybe I'm not balanced as well as I should be. Totally. Yeah. It's like to, to work remote effectively long-term, like the first part being, being productive is sort of like table stakes um, to just, for it to work at all. And then after that, the real challenge is, um, is, uh, yeah, is, is having that balance, staying healthy. Um, I, I think I had seen that app a couple of times and I thought to myself, that's a really cool app. I should use that. And then I ha haven't actually done it. So, um, that's, that's cool. How many, um, how many calls have you, have you done through that app so far? This is the first week I, inst I literally installed it on Thursday. Oh, nice, so nice. <laughs> I've got my, I've got my person, and we're gonna call at some point this week. That's cool. That'll be cool to see how that goes. Actually, I mean, to be honest, part of the reason I think I'm doing these live streams, I, mm -hmm. I um, got back from Imagine. I was like, man, I really like connecting with people, talking with people, um, and, You're and almost. Agent, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Almost trying to reproduce that a little bit, and it's never it's never perfect. Uh, any online, you know, tool versus in person, but you know, one one can try. Um, and, how, and how long have you been remote? Then? Um, I've been remote, I think, for five six years now. Okay. Um, yeah, I had a. A job uh, back when I lived in LA. Uh, God, what year was that? I isn't it funny how like sometimes like you'll think of something as being X years ago, and then you keep saying the same X like three years later. You're like five. You're like, no, actually, it's been eight years now. <laughs> so I think so something like that, five six years. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, and then I've had times where I've just been going nuts, and I've had to uh, go to a co working space and and. Uh, sure. That can be good. Uh, since moving here, um, I'm back to working in the home. I have more space now in in our in our house here. So um, yeah, I'm just in the house now. I don't go mm -hmm. out at all. <laughs> um, although there is a meetup in uh, there's a there's a Magento meetup on Wednesday that I'm looking forward to. Cool. Is that in the office or somewhere else? Yeah, it's at the. Um, I think it's at the domain, but I think it's at some bar or something like that. Oh, I'm cool. just gonna okay. grab grab drinks keep it cash mm -hmm. um yeah so that should be fun Sounds um and and so uh, on the general topic of mental health i know that's something you've been interested in and have talked about a bit and it kind of ties into work working from home trying mm -hmm. to keep things balanced and stuff like that um what are like what are you what are your thoughts what are your thoughts on that whole i know you did uh you did an um a stream at imagine i think right with with, yeah, uh, we did we did one on Imagine, and we also did one just before Imagine on Blue Monday. Well, I say just before; that's like February. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. It's it's something that's always been pretty pretty close to me. Like I had a big issue with um, burnout when I was younger, like a lot younger. 
I mean, I'm like 30 now, so. You know, I was gonna say you look like you're like 22 or something, man. I'm like I'm, I'm 31, man. All right, respect. So. respect. Uh, I'm pushing, pushing the yeah, exactly. That's why I need the glasses. It's the age. <laughs> Um, oh, dude, so, we both got glasses recently. Oh, yeah, they're good. I mean, I, do recently. Now. I don't feel bad driving anymore. I mean, I'm you know what? Sort of keep them on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab my glasses so we can rock them together. Okay. I'll keep talking about my yeah, health stuff. Keep, yeah. keep talking, yeah. So, I, uh, yeah, it's something I got involved with uh, after I myself went through a little bit of, uh, like, problems with burnout and, and stuff like that. Um Oh, you just, you look so smart, man. Don't I look? Uh, it's the IQ lift that does it, right? Lifts it. Wicked smart with, it, yeah. with the eyeglasses. Oh, they're good, man. I like them. Then the headphones accentuate the smartness even further. I always, I struggle. Like, I have a pair of nice, like, studio headphones, and yeah. I can't wear my glasses and the headphones at the same time. It's super hard. Honestly, mm -hmm. usually I have to take them off just to put my glasses on. It's kind mm -hmm. of a massive pain in the butt. Uh, but I've just gotten used to it cause I just have to, like, I have to wear them when I'm on the computer okay. and then I have to have my headphones on so I can be okay. rocking out. So it's just, I've had to, I've had to make it work. Um, yeah. Yeah. So like, um, yeah, so we, we decided me and Rebecca, Rebecca sent me a message and she was like, I've got this thing and I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to launch it. I don't know what to do. And it was Mage MH, uh, the mental health kind of awareness within in Magento. And she was just like, how, how do I do that? And I'm like, let's just stream. Like, I'm the sort of person where it's like, just do it. Just do it. Do it if it's imperfect. Just do it and, and, and progress it as, as you go along. You know, make it better as you do it. Um, I, well, I go one or two ways. Either I don't do everything, anything because I'm so petrified that it's going to be rubbish or I just do too much and just keep like push it out. And um, so I was just like, yeah, let's just, let's just do it. So we arranged our live stream uh, on Blue Monday, uh, got her to, she was already doing the, um, the charity raising money, dying here, um, which, which went well. And then uh, I'd imagine they had the booth and they're like, let's get you in. I'm like, okay, cool. So she arranged all that stuff and I just turned up. Um, but uh, yeah. Nice. By yeah. the way, shout out to uh, Vinay Cop here in the room. He asked me no more Buddha ears because last time I was wearing my AirPods. Okay. And the reason, Vinay, the reason is because um, I could hear my kids yelling in the background and it was driving me crazy. So these have better, mm -hmm. uh, they make me all sweaty, but they have better noise cancellation. Sure. So I went. I went, I went back, but everybody, but I got everybody in the room to vote how, how dumb I looked with the AirPods on. And, uh, so anyways, yeah. that was, that was a good time. Also, Jesse, the cutie in the room, shout out to, to Jesse. Um, no, that's super cool. So, um, who was the dude that you guys had, uh, on that Joe street? Ferguson. Joe Ferguson. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah. I, I had gotten a tweet from him recently. I was thinking maybe I should do a try to get something going with him what's his story he has he has a pretty um yeah like his story is it's pretty all, pretty much everyone that is involved with osme the open source mental illness has um, is doing it because they had that issue and and they wanted to they were missing the support so they're now being the support if that makes sense um so they're all uh, they're all kind of it's it's kind of weird. Like a lot of people might think you you need to you need to be perfect to provide the support, but but you don't. You know, you just need to be there. You just need to be the support. Um, and uh, it's 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 great to see the whole initiative and that whole team kind of doing really well. Getting on, get like getting them to imagine was great. Having them down was 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 awesome. Seeing them getting the word out, getting people come into their booth, like them having a booth is, is awesome. Um, and I think hopefully we'll see that across maybe more conferences in the Magento space. Uh, it's definitely something that's needed. I think a lot of people, a lot of people have that kind of, I don't know whether it's technology industry in general, but a lot of people have, 
have had issues or going through sort of things and, and, and need the support and maybe don't quite know where to get it from. Um, and so things like Osme or Mage MH that, um, that Rebecca's doing and, and that sort of stuff is, is super important, I think. Um, it's something that's always been close to my heart. It was actually the first, first conference talk I ever did was about my uh, breakdown, actually. Like, uh, it was a, the PHP on conference, uh, not the Magenta one, just the PHP one. And uh, someone was like, can anyone talk about burnout and, and stuff? And I'm like, yeah, I can. I'll, I'll think up something. Um, and we did, we did an hour talk, which was basically just getting the room talking about stuff. It wasn't specifically me. I told my story and then just got the room talking. And then afterwards spent about two hours missing the next session because people just wanted to talk. Um, you know. Wow. So I think by lunchtime, it was the first talk of the day. And then by lunchtime, I was kind of okay to go back to the actual like planned schedule of the conference because yeah, people people wanted to talk. It's really, I found it's really um once someone starts talking about it, it just opens it up, you know? Um, totally. And I, you just need to say, like, be honest, be a bit truthful, and uh, it breaks down a lot of, breaks down boundaries, I think. Honesty is something that's missing at the moment a lot in the world. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Absolutely, man. Um, do you want to dive into that a, a little bit now? Like, as far, like, as, far as like, what it was like with that... The breakdown sure. you mentioned. I know, obviously, this is a different format than an unconference, which is live and recorded and all that. So I don't want to be too nosy, but I, I totally agree. I think that people just being transparent about these things can be really powerful for others mm -hmm. that are, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So basically what, what happened with me was I was through pretty much the whole of school. I think I needed to study for one exam for the whole thing and, and got out with good grades, got into the university I wanted and then got there and was like, I have no idea how to work or how to study or, you know, and um, at university, at school, they want you to succeed. And at university, often it can feel like they just don't care. It is my opinion. In, in, in a classic kind of UK university, I hope it's different now. It's been trying to do the maths it's been about 14 years since i was at university so hopefully it's changed um but for me it was like i didn't have the support from my lecturer side and that kind of i just just went into a horrible kind of spiral at that point um, burnt out completely had uh, so many opportunities where i was just just destroyed emotionally and not sure what i should do whether i should just get up and leave or, or what you know um but the good thing was well two good things so first my wife who at the time was my girlfriend she kind of was going she studies counseling and psychology and so she was like you should go and get some help you know um and i don't know if it's the same now but in the uk at that time uh if you are at the university and the university themselves provide counseling it's all free um so i was like well there's nothing really to lose you know i'm not paying for it i'm not whatever so went through did counseling um basically the counseling was just teaching me how to deal with anxiety and, and that side of stuff now I, I i don't think i know how to do it perfectly like i still have times where i just have a massive panic and just have to like either have to block everything out or there are certain go-to people that i will go and see and i will like people that support me or build me up um and that's kind of a big thing especially around conferences it kind of hits me more than than on a day-to-day -day thing conferences can be a bit overwhelming for me um and uh uh yeah so making sure like just kind of taught me how to how to process things how to making sure I had the support I needed um, and also knowing the kind of warning signs. So you can see ahead of time, something's going to happen or you're going down the wrong 
directional or that sort of thing. And for me, as a guy, it's very stereotypical, but actually being told that it's okay to talk about things. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was kind of it. And um, yeah, like I said, I still don't think I'm perfectly, you know, I don't think I still have times. Like our last time I was in the UK was at the Distributed Contribution Day, and I was in Nottingham at GAH, and it was like two very very busy days. Um, and at the end of it, everyone kind of they all went home, and I'm there, and I'm in a hotel room on my own, and I'm like, this is just not what I want. Where I want to be now, it's not right. It's not what I want. So I phoned up my friend from back home and oh, back at university in Sheffield is about an hour away and i'm like i'm coming to you i don't care if you're busy i don't care what you're doing just let me sit on your sofa and we can watch some tv and ignore the world kind of thing so um yeah so That's it cool. still happens you know but yeah That's having cool having them kind of know what to do when it happens or when it's about you know mm -hmm. yeah and then that's that's powerful man just having those relationships that you can go and and, and yeah. talk to people um yeah i know for me conferences it's weird it's like uh they can be a lot of time probably most probably 80 percent of the time for me they're great fun mm -hmm. energizing but then there's that 20 percent where for whatever reason you can just feel like crap you can have an awkward conversation with someone or you know and then you just feel like a goofball and um mm -hmm. I actually imagine this year I leading up to it, I was not like super pumped. I was, uh, I was, uh, I don't know. I wasn't into it. And then once I got there, it was just, it was, it was great. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, uh, but like, uh, the last meet Magento Austin or no, no, the last Austin meetup I went to, I don't know exactly why I just, I felt a little, I felt kind of awkward and I ended up leaving. I didn't go out for drinks afterwards. It just was like, nah, you know, and I think it happens to. Yeah, definitely. You definitely. Know? But yeah. I think it's, it's quite a challenging thing for an organizer to, to arrange, like you can't please everyone and uh, having an environment or making an environment, for example, imagine, right? So there were like over 3000 people there, right? And how do you, how do you cater for everyone? You know, like, how do you make sure that, like, how do you make sure that the people that want a party have a party, people that don't want a party have a place where they can just meet up and, and hang out, that kind of stuff. And it's, uh, I think they did an amazing job. I think what was cool to see was um, the fact that they provided, like, um, chain, like baby changing facility and baby feeding facilities and stuff because they had a few people there. Um, who, who brought their kids. And I, I think that's one of the first conferences that I've been to that provided that sort of thing. Um, and I know, talking to Rebecca, that um, me and Magendo in the UK are going to provide like a, a downtime space, like a like essentially like a quiet zone sort of thing. Um, so that's cool. But yeah, conferences are tough, man. Especially long conferences. Uh, yeah. Long con like, Imagine was like, over a week for me, being oh, away okay. from family, being like time zone as well. Like it, I was going, it was like midnight was seven o'clock, I think, in the morning here. And so having that time, like we, me and my wife didn't have that much time to talk through the whole time that I was at Imagine. So yeah, yeah, yeah it can be, it can be tiring. Yeah, any anybody. Uh, going to imagine from the U.S. is like playing in easy mode versus uh, <laughs> people coming from Europe and beyond that, you know, have massive uh, time zone issues to deal with as well. Yeah. Yeah. One of the craziest ones for me this year was um, uh, India, Me Magento, India, uh, because it's, it's five and a half hours different from Frankfurt, from Germany. And so... Uh, my body was like, yeah, it's time to go to sleep at six in the morning. And then it's like, wait, no, I need to get up in like two hours. Time zones, time zones are crazy. Yeah. Time zones are no fun at times. Um, 
So uh, I, had a, I had a question. You know, you talked mm-hmm. about how you're primarily kind of doing outreach to to Europe. Yeah. Um, obviously, on the community engineering team, I think about sort of the kind of divide between community edition and enterprise. I'm calling it enterprise till the cows come home. I'm not on board with this new language um, <laughs> or open source and enterprise. And and obviously in Europe, there I, at least I, I think there's mm-hmm. uh, as far as I know there's less enterprise adoption. Um, more there, you know, more o- openness to, to the open source side of things. And you've been obviously with SiteWords and Enterprise Partner. How do you how how are you feeling about sort of the the quote divide? Not that there's a real divide there, but between the the community side of things and the enter enterprise side of things. Um, just trying to think how best to phrase this. <laughs> but they're not best band marks. And, um, yeah. <laughs> invoke the marks invoke exactly. the ben marks <laughs> may the spirit of ben marks come upon oh. me <laughs> so i I, uh, I was a big believer of using enterprise when you need it and using uh, the open source when you don't need the enterprise essentially um and i think a lot of people a lot of people think the same when it's appropriate if the project is appropriate great use it um the thing that i don't i'm not a big fan of is either way when the project isn't appropriate using the wrong one you know and i I think there are there can be a few people that are too enterprise focused and people that are too community only you know Um, and i think it's important to to pick the right thing for any project pick the right system for any project and i think what I'm super excited about is um, what is happening with Page Builder, which is that it comes with it, like it's bundled. So if you want it for um, community, then you can get it. Um, but it is an enterprisey feature, you know. But I think what would be awesome, and I think what I've heard a lot in Germany, especially in Germany, was like some of the features they want, but they don't want the full thing. You know, so being able to kind of pick and choose which features you want and which features you don't want um, on a project, that would allow you to go in and say, right, this project needs X and Y, but it doesn't need Z. Having that kind of granularity side of stuff would be amazing. Um, that's something I've wanted for a long time. And I don't know if we'll get it or not. But, you know, you like you look at like Zen or Symphony, and when you're building it, you're like, okay, I want this and this, but I don't want the full thing. But then having that installation process that is easier for other people that might not have as detailed a knowledge, and so they can get the full package as well. So you have the full package option, and you have like an installation of these different modules and putting them together. Having both would be awesome. And I think then that, especially having that installation process, of individual modules would then get rid of this like it's one or the other you know having an option where you could be like awesome i'll take a page builder and i'll take the the, uh, the caching and the splitting of the database stuff and that's what this project needs and it doesn't need the rest being able to pick and choose like that would be awesome yeah no that does make sense um i i, I think about back when i was in-house with a merchant on enterprise and that was sort of our issue is we didn't use we didn't use all of the enterprise stuff some of it was important to us Uh, probably the biggest thing from their perspective was just like having the um uh like legally like that you're you know you're you're on the paid version in case for whatever you know whatever reason yeah Yeah. um so yeah that's cool i i don't i'm not sure i think now that you're mentioning i think i remember hearing something about the content management where you can you can basically buy it standalone or as part of an enterprise license that's really cool. yeah that's what i heard um and i think that's a great way of doing it i think that that is kind of let people in like lots of people want that you know and so giving it to them is the is great giving yeah. them that option yeah. do you think um as far as like so is enterprise adoption lower in europe that's been my impression for a while but i didn't know um not that that's necessarily like your, you know, your your field per se, but I figured yeah. you probably have some insight on it. I don't know. I, so one thing we did, like, was set, um, 
uh, Vladimir was doing a presentation um, about how we do our projects and working with partners. And when they when it was first set up, we were kind of expecting everyone to jump on, uh, like if you're a partner, jump on the enterprise kind of features and improve them and, and, and provide code to that. But actually, a lot of them were still providing to the um, the community version of it because a lot of the things they wanted to do were more of the core side rather than the feature side, you know. Um, so I don't know. I know when I was there at Devanta, they use enterprise a lot, um, and I think it, I think it's different for every market. You know, I don't think you could turn around and say Europe is only community. You could probably turn around and say Germany is mostly community, but then again, it could just be that because the German community is so mature in terms of it's been around for such a long time that um, it's very vocal, and the vocal people are the ones using the community edition you know it could mm -hmm. you know it could be that it's just the the louder the squeakiest wheel thing you know right yeah because that was going to be my follow-up question is like if it is the case that there's less adoption like what what are the reasons behind that which you kind of um you kind of spoke to a little bit yeah. um but uh yeah that's um it's interesting i think that uh, are you do you are you um are you seeing like with the different um, the different uh, pricing model for for enterprise and the and the and the uh, bil ability to pick and choose different things? Do you think you're seeing more adoption, or is it? I know again, these are questions that maybe are, are best asked to somebody else. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll be honest um, with you. Yeah, honesty is the best policy. I don't know. Um, so. Um, See man, what else? What else were we gonna talk about? So you said. So I remember seeing some pictures of you skating. You said you haven't oh, yeah. skated for a while. Yeah. So skating was my commute. I used to. Oh, okay. Uh, nice. It was like a, a. Oh, what do I have in all those binders behind me? That's all my uh, all my important documents. <laughs> this wait. This one here holds all our passports. Uh, I don't know what that one is. Finance. It says. Yeah, I don't know. My wife does all the finance stuff. I don't do it. I'm terrible with that sort of thing. Uh, what was your question? Sorry, Ben distracted me in chat. Yeah, Ben Roby chiming in with an important question there. Thanks, thanks, Ben. Uh, the question was, oh, skating. 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 Yeah. So I had like a, uh, from where I am to the train was about 10 minutes, 15 minute walk. Um, and so Toby Hartman from Sidewoods just got me back into skating, something I used to do when I was younger. And then he was like, oh, yeah, you can have my old skateboard because he went and bought long boards instead. And so uh, I was doing that basically to get to the train, just, you know, a form of transport. Um, and now that I just walk through that door to get to the office, I mean, I could skate. Um, technically. <laughs> technically, yeah. Uh, my wife might not like me skating through the hall, though. <laughs> my kids do it all the time, but... I'm not sure. There's a seven-year-old and, and a 31-year-old skating in the hall. Seven-year-old, <laughs> you can let them off. You know? Right, right, right. I um I got some rollerblades recently because I used to rollerblade, oh, nice. mm -hmm. and uh, so I could r roll around with my kids. But they're not. They were, I bought them online, so they they didn't fit right. So I got to return them, get some others. Okay. Um, but uh, I used to skate a little bit. I was more into rollerblading than skating. Mm -hmm. um, I think about six months ago, I started skating, or uh, a year ago, I started skating to the coffee shop back in Monrovia. Every okay. almost every day is kind of fun. Um, so we have that in common. Um, if Ben is interested, this bottom shelf here, half of it is all my German notes from when I had to learn German. Like. <laughs> It's a crazy amount of notes. <laughs> How well do you speak? Okay, so what's your background? You're Scottish? Yes. So Give us I'm, the history there. Okay, the history. I was born in Scotland. My dad is from London. My mom is from Glasgow. Um, I left Scotland when I was 17 to go to university. Uh, so I, I started university when I was 17 um, because that's what you do in Scotland normally. Uh, we have like one less year of school because we're that great. Um, uh, so then 
that freaked people out. So my birthday in February. So I'd been like going to the same, you know, going to the same pub every night kind of thing after university. And then one day I walk in and they're like, oh, uh, you're celebrating, aren't you? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's your birthday. Like, oh, cool. So you're 19. I'm like, no, no, now I'm 18. They're like, wait, what? <laughs> after serving me for like six months. It's like, oh, yes. Are you um, supposed to be 19 in order to drink? 18 in, in oh. the UK. But I was at university when I was 17. And they just assumed, oh, you're at university, everyone's 18. Got it. Got um, so then I went to uni at Sheffield, um, which is like the middle of it. It's like an hour away from Manchester, if you know Manchester. Um, and I was there until eight years ago. So I studied, and then I got a job, met my wife. Uh, my oldest was born in Sheffield, and then we moved to Germany. It will be eight years in September. Um, started working for Sightwords until six months ago. Well, eight months ago. Um, and then switched over to Magento, and they're like, we want you in Europe, and we don't care where you work. So I'm like, okay, I'll stay in Germany. I like it. Nice. What, what, uh, for Frankfurt or? Yeah, Frank. Well, uh, I am about 20 kilometers outside of Frankfurt. No one lives in Frankfurt. It's like business only. Um, yeah. Gotcha. I think we had three people out of a company of 20 that actually lived in Frankfurt. Gotcha. Everyone gotcha. else commutes. Europe, it's all about, like, we have transport on, like, you guys. Right. So you guys can just hop on the train. I, I can get to the Netherlands in 20 minutes. Uh, sorry, in two hours on the train. So wow. direct from my house. So That's wild. Yeah. Um, so are you just going to stay in, in Germany? There's no, like nowhere else in now that you can live wherever the heck you want in Europe. There's nowhere else that uh, you guys want to. No, I, I have no plans to leave Germany. I love it here. Um, I'm not going to rule out moving. Um, but like, I definitely wouldn't go back to the UK. That's a controversial statement. Um, <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> it sucks. Sorry. <laughs> That's an even more controversial statement. Uh, Show title. I, I really, I didn't like the working environment in the UK. Let's put it that way. Now, that's not saying there isn't good working environments. Just like my first job was amazing. I loved it. And then after that, there just um, wasn't wasn't the right environment and i got to the stage where i was in a small sheffield's not that big and the options were like move to london and i'm like i don't want to move to london you know and so i might retire back to like northern scotland go back to the go back to the hills enjoy some scenery there uk is beautiful but you work so hard that you don't see much of it gotcha yeah. so the so the work-life balance is a little bit it is a little bit skewed over that's, in uh that's what i found i mean work-life balance here is also is also not the best here in germany well it's still pretty good like uh, sundays i don't know how it is in america but like here sundays everything's closed like no shops like today's a bank holiday here it's it's um whip monday fixed right and um uh, no royal wedding for me. I'm very sorry. Uh, and and public holiday means everything's closed. So if you haven't done your shopping, tough. You're not eating, <laughs> right? You know, like things close, and it's like go see your family. That's that's right. what Sunday and that's what public holidays are. So during the week they work really hard, but then on the weekends and everything, like you're not even allowed to cut your grass on a Sunday. You're not allowed to make noise. It's like you'll get shouted at by your neighbors. In fact, I witnessed people getting shouted at because they were cutting their grass and their neighbors like not on a Sunday. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, by the way, Vinay says, love having you here in Germany. Uh, I Matthew, assume that's in Germany and not in the live stream. <laughs> I think I think he's in Germany. Matthew Howarth is, is repping Manchester. Manchester's um, great. I'm really, really sorry. Also, a big thing in Germany, the weather. We actually have seasons. Like, I was in Sheffield, and it's like it either rains or it's windy, and that was it. You know, and and I was born in Edinburgh, which means 12 degrees Celsius is summer for me. 
you know. And so here it's like today is nearly 30 and it's too hot. But winter we get snow, summer we get heat, seasons, people. That's what right. the UK is missing. Yeah, I'm a fantasy. I mean, I moved from LA, which you don't you don't really have seasons to mm -hmm. Austin here. And we have seasons a little bit more. We don't get snow, which would be kind of beautiful, actually. But uh, we have a bit of snow. People from had, Magenta were sending me pictures of snow, and I'm like, I haven't had snow this year. Yeah, it was like, you know, that is like three snowflakes fell on the entire city, and everybody was all excited about it. Um, but uh yeah, not not a ton. And then Ben is saying to please provide in depth commentary on the recent royal wedding. But I guess you you don't have you don't my have my wife watched it. Yeah. My wife watched it. She's a my she, wife watched it too. She's a big fan of weddings in general, not just royal weddings. Uh, big big disappointment that we didn't get an invitation to Rebecca's wedding because that's what we were pushing for. Last uh, Rebecca Brockton uh, used to be trough. Uh, we were pushing for that invite. Never came. That's harsh. That's know, harsh. You know. So we love weddings, uh, but I was in Poland, so I missed the royal wedding. I heard it was. I heard it was good. Um. Actually, I remembered what I was going to ask you. Um. A few minutes ago, I can't remember what you were talking about. You, but you were saying when I was at Devante, and I think you meant to say when I was at Sight Words. No, uh, when I was I was in Poland this week. But you were in Poland this week. But I know we talked about that before we started recording. Uh, anyways, oh, okay. but but so um, but so uh, what what were you in? What were you there in Poland for with the Devante folks? So we had a contribution day, and they also we did a Magento contribution day upstairs and downstairs. They did a view storefront contribution day, which is pretty cool. Um, so we had dual options for people, which was quite nice. So it wasn't just like come and do Magento stuff. There was other options. Um, Snowdog had a lot of people uh, at the view storefront, which is pretty cool. Um, and then the next day they did a uh, open source uh, conference. So people, mainly maintainers, I guess, were talking about maintaining projects, I guess, um, and how to, how, to, how to get people into projects and stuff like that. Um, and nice. uh, yeah, so I was there talking about building a healthy environment for contributors. Nice. Um, looks like we have a question popping in here from Anshu. Can people like me get some guidance on refactoring test classes? A few days back, I refactored main class code, which also requires modifications in test class, and I'm not sure how to do that. Where can I get the help? Regarding it, and so I'm not sure if this is a good question uh, for you uh, or not, but that's all right. Uh, I would assume it's a unit test. I'm going to say it's a unit test. Um, if it's a unit test, uh, there is, uh, or in fact, for all the tests, there's a relatively good getting involved in testing on our dev docs. There's a document there. Um, unit test. There's a lot of good stuff uh, with regards to PHP unit and how to do PHP unit. Um, side of stuff. Um, yeah, it's testing is tough. I know, especially uh, if you are a. This is one big thing. So if you're a Magento one, I think you've talked about this before, Caleb. But if you're a Magento one developer going to Magento two, I think that's a lot harder than if you're just a PHP developer going to Magento two. Um, and things like dependency injection, things like tests, um, is kind of or can be new to a lot of people who have been living in a mage one world. Um, and about two, three years ago, uh, I started going around and making sure I wasn't just doing uh, Magento conferences, but also doing general PHP stuff, making sure that I'm uh, trying to be as up to date as possible um, to make that transition smooth. Um, and, but that's the same thing. Same thing can happen easily with Magento 2. You get stuck in the Magento or PHP world in general, but a uh, Magento 2 world, and, and then you're not too sure how to, uh, how to extend from there, and you get stuck. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. Um, Ooh. Got a question from Matthew Howard. Actually, Matthew put out a poll recently on, like, hey, how are people actually doing testing kind of in the real world? And I think he got some results. I think that's what he's referring to here, where he says 56% uh, of people don't bother testing M2. 
will that number decrease? Wow, why so pessimistic, Matthew? What do you think? Will that number decrease? Uh, depends how much uh, budget Vinay has um, for the next year of uh, going out and telling people how great testing is and how to do it. Um, if you've ever, if you've, if you've ever had the opportunity to get Vinay in for some training, do it. I have a question. How mm. how cool would it be if Magento invested in Mage Two TV? Super cool. I, I was lucky to see it uh, January before I think it was um, even in beta. Then I asked me about it, and I love that sort of content. You know, like um, a, a short content that gets you like five minutes, gets you into a topic, focus on a topic. That is for me how content should be. That's how I kind of digest content, and that's why, Caitlin, you're doing a great job with the the videos you do. It's like bite-sized snippets, um, apart from the live streams, but the other ones, you know, bite-sized snippets. <laughs> you can, you don't need to watch those at three times, five times fast. You know, they're like two minutes. You know, right? Get in, tell me what I need to know, and get out. Right. And a nice voice. You could listen. Like I remember, so uh, sexy doing the mage to um, the like the pre-training or the pre. There was some training they did, some videos for partners. And the first kind of three videos, I'm like, do, 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 uh, come on, come on. And then on the fourth or the fifth one, Vinay's voice came in, and I'm like, right, I'm in. Like, I can watch this video. It's Vinay. Yeah. You know? So Totally, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I actually think it'd be sweet if, if, um, cause I know Vinay is re releasing them in monthly batches mm -hmm. and I think it'd be awesome if like he could tweet out little, little teaser videos, um, of them on a, on a, on a daily basis. Just throwing that out there, throwing yeah, that. He's there. He's there. listening. He's right there. Um, Vinay is giving some feedback to Anshu about the testing, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, so I mean yeah, so hopefully that that training really will encourage testing. Um, do you are you got this is probably a dumb question, but are you doing a lot? What what percent of your day is? I know you're saying you aren't doing as much coding as you'd like, but like what percentage of your day is coding roughly right now? I do uh, little to no development. I do a lot of reviewing other people as code. I do a lot of um, planning tasks. Does that make sense? Like um, uh, working through kind of helping people, helping people debug whether it's debug uh, code or whether it's debugging uh, mindset and planning side of stuff. So that's kind of more what I'm doing at the moment. Um, but I was doing that when I was at Sightwoods as well. Um, the last year or so at Sightwoods, or two years, I guess, um, it was more tech lead, uh, CTO role, and not not actually getting my hands dirty. Um, and that's probably one of the reasons that I got this job was because I wasn't getting my hands dirty in work. And so I'm like, okay, let me contribute. Um, <laughs> right. You know, and, and, and I think I did about 50 pull requests last year, I think. I think I would have been top if I hadn't joined Magento. You would have been the top contributor? I think I would have been the top contributor last year, but then I joined Magento and they took me off. Ah, that's rough. That's yeah. rough. I just remembered another question I was going to ask, which is, um, so Philip uh, Jackson talked a little bit on, on, on one of our mage talks about how um, they did a bunch of contribution around uh, certification tests and I think some pull requests, but the way that the incentive, which I think the incentives to partners are super cool, Mm -hmm. um, that they're incentivizing partners to contribute and giving them partner points or whatever. Sure. But it's, I think that only the top three uh, get any points at all. And we were thinking, well, maybe it's better if, you know, everybody that like everybody that contributes gets a certain number of points based on what they're doing, like less of a contest and more of a, you, you'll get X for Y contribution. Um, yeah. What do you, what do you think about that? That is a very tough one. Have, like, basically, we what we do as a as a team is get people to code stuff for us for free, um, <laughs> which is 
like you've got to be super respectful for someone to give you stuff for free if that makes sense you know so in terms of rewards it's it's a tough one it's very like we are kind of highlighting what we're trying to do is we're trying to not just highlight the people that are regularly c contributing but also highlight um the the highlight worthy contributions as well you know one person could contribute once in the whole year but that contribution could be amazing in terms of a new feature or whatever so we need to highlight that as well as you know someone giving us 60 like typo changes you know what i mean and so it can be it can be quite tough um it's another thing we have to look at it's another thing we are looking at um one thing someone I don't remember who it was, but someone was talking about this and imagined to me, it may have been a uh, Christoph. Um, and it was like saving one, like you get a, the idea was you kind of, for every contribution, you get a ticket to like a raffle essentially. And anyone could get a reward, if that makes sense. And like every month, you get like your top contributor plus you get like one raffled off reward or something and for every contribution you do in that month you get a ticket which i i think is quite a nice idea i don't know what we how we could do that it might take a little bit more thinking um alexi is kind of the one that's heading up um at least the open source um uh, contribution side of stuff i'm not sure about the partner stuff whether he's also heavily involved in that or whether that's with the partner team um but i know they've got some they do have some changes in place um, um but yeah it's a, it is a tough one like open source people get i still half the time i don't understand like creativity why did they give the instant purchase i still don't understand that like i love the fact they gave us that instant purchase pull request but why not why wouldn't they make that their module you know mm -hmm. it's it uh, I, I do open source and I still don't understand why people do open source. Let's mm -hmm. put it that way. I contribute right. and I still sit there and go, what, like, of course, there's a marketing benefit for them to contribute, but there's also a marketing benefit for them to have a well known module, you know? Right, right. So it's like, it, it, it's a tough one. I have no good answer for that, unfortunately. Um, I'm more than willing to take ideas. Um, if anyone has any ideas about contribution and they want to, they can reach out to me at any point. Uh, it's my job. I might tell you, oh, cool, I'll get back to you on Monday or the next day. You know, I'm allowed to have a weekend, I think, every now and again. Um, I've been talking with Ben and Sherry about that, actually. They've been pretty, pretty good in the sense of, you know, you can turn your phone off, right? I'm like, oh, yeah, OK. <laughs> Phil's, a, Phil's a naughty one, actually. So Phil has my number. And he WhatsApp me directly about something on like a Sunday, and I'm like, and he was he was like, how do you make sure that contribution is uh, everyone that like there's no kind of privilege in contribution? And I'm like, you have my number, <laughs> that's privilege. <laughs> but it's like, wow, man, it's so, so funny. <laughs> um, that's hysterical. Um, uh, you know, yeah. actually. It's funny. I I remember, you know, Ger you know, Germany. You're talking about how there there's a big emphasis on work life balance and things like that. And I think I read somewhere that I don't know if it's now or it's a future law, but like it's illegal to email your employees on the weekend. Oh yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, I, isn't I'm that not sure. What? I'm not sure what the exact like rule is, but yeah, there's there's some. They they love to protect their weekends. Yeah. So Phil might have broken several. I don't know. I think I'm technically I'm American uh, employee. Yeah, I guess, so. Technically, technically. Yeah. Um, I'd love yeah. to, you know, but I, that just made me laugh when you were messaging. Me. <laughs> Privileged. Like, I'm, I'm gonna get in trouble for something. Like that. <laughs> That's okay. That's what these things are all about: getting people in trouble. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I managed to last this long without being fired, so it'll be. Fun. <laughs> um. No, that's funny. Yeah, it's 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 it is power. I mean, it's it's true that you guys get people to to write code for free. That's kind of you know we're talking about the investment Magento's made in community engineering, and it's kind of like your superpower is you've just what was the percentage of uh, 
core code that came from the community this year. I think they announced it at imagine it was some insanely high number, 30 or 40%, something it's like that. It's around the 30. I think at the moment it's higher. Um, I think at the moment it's about, including MSI and stuff like that, uh, at the moment it's about 50, which is unbelievable, um, but better believe it. Uh, and last year I think it was 25, 30, something like that, um, which is incredible. And, and one of the things, like, and this kind of ties in with the mental health stuff as well, um, one of the things is we shouldn't abuse that in terms of if, if someone is doing their day job, and then also contributing. That's one way to lead into like a burnout and an unhealthy environment and situation, you know? So we also have to be very mindful of not uh, taking too much out of people um, and making sure, like part of the thing I'm focusing on at the moment is building this healthy environment in the sense of helping people to contribute. But we also need to build this healthy environment in terms of diversity and also in terms of respect for people and um, making sure yeah making sure we're not abusing the community and not just you know running them dry or you know making sure people uh have a social life making sure that we're not like you're doing monday to friday and then saturday for us and then you know so again but i don't know totally. how the best to do that i just have that in my mind and thinking yeah yeah, I feel guilty now because I don't tend to go to the hackathons that much. Like, for example, at like Imagine, mm -hmm. um, which I feel sort of guilty about, but it's kind of like I'm kind of going to hang out with people, relaxed. I'm not really going to sit there and stare at a computer for eight hours straight. Um, yeah. But, um, we, had but this, I, we had this discussion, right? About um, uh, it was on Twitter, and it's like not everyone. Not everyone should make videos, right? And not everyone should blog, and not everyone should code, and not everyone should write docs, not everyone should tweet, not ever, you know, like the community, to be a healthy community, it needs people doing what they love. And if what you love is connecting with people, then connect with people. If what you love is blogging, then blog. If it's video, then video. You know what I mean? It's like, there shouldn't be this, and I, as long as, what as am I as, allowed to do or what am I supposed to do? Like, just, exactly. just do you, right? Exactly. And Sonia has been pushing this as well in terms of, like, contribution isn't just code. And making sure that we're aware of that. And, and that was one of, the, one of the great talks I saw at the uh, conference I was just at, the open source conference, was, like, contributing 101 and didn't talk about code. It was just, like, here are all the ways to contribute. And it's basically... How do you contribute? You you do you do you you do what what like what gets you up in the morning? You know what interests you, and how can you put that into the magenta world? And that's contribution, right? You so you mentioned um, you talked about not taking too much out of open source contributors, and mm -hmm. you talked about how when when before you joined Magento, you were contributing really heavily. Were you doing that on your own time, or you, or were you able to do that? during your work day? A bit of both. So uh, yeah, we, were, we were always like, Sightwood, I was always lucky with Sightwood. Sightwood was the sort of place where you didn't count. You didn't count hours. You know, like get your work done. And if that means your work's done by three o'clock on the, on the day, then the rest of the time is your own. You know, you can either work on what you should be doing in the next couple of days or you can do something else. And that's that's something I've always had and always wanted in in environments. And in fact, the, the one job that didn't give me that, I was there for like six months and I'm like, no, I'm done. Sheffield. Uh, that, Sheffield. Was the, that, was the, uh, that was the last job I had before I moved to Germany. Let's put it that way. I gotcha. <laughs> um, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um. No, that's that, but but so the question is like it's interesting because you know we talked about like like balance mm -hmm. and and some of the things you've struggled with in the past of of bur burnout, mm -hmm. and yet you spent probably a significant amount of time on your on your own uh, your own time outside of work, um, uh, contributing, and it's it worked it's worked out well for you, right? It's given you some great opportunities, and it sounds like you enjoy you enjoyed it. So where is the balance there? Like you're like saying, well, don't yeah. do too much, but for you it worked out great and you know you have that perspective of having gone through burnout 
Yeah, there were some interesting tweets over the weekend uh, where it's like, basically, there's a lot of people in the in the tech community now that are like, don't do this because you'll get burnt out. Don't do this. Make sure you've got a social life. Make sure that you have this. And someone was just like, that's how I got to where I am now was not having a social life was, you know, so how, how can you as someone that's gone through that tell someone, don't do it? Like, honestly, if I hadn't spent so much contributing last year, I probably wouldn't be in this job now. So how can I turn around and tell someone, oh, just be careful not to over contribute. Right. You know, exactly. Or, right. <laughs> <laughs> like experience. There were definitely times where I was doing too much and I was like, I need to contribute because I've been contributing once or twice a month and, and I need to keep that number up, you know? Um, um, but, but I want to kind of build an environment where someone can turn around and say, Hey, work's busy. I can't contribute. You know, and like, I know it might be a kind of a pain for some people, but we have this thing where if a pull request is closed for us, uh, inactive for a certain amount of time, then we'll close it. But my kind of rule, I kind of changed that a little for myself. If I have a pull request assigned to me and someone has messaged me and said, I'm busy, but I will get back to this in a couple of weeks, then what I'll do is I'll set myself a reminder and I'll leave it open. And, you know, let, give it the environment where someone can turn around and say, hey, this is the start of my pull request. It's not complete yet, but life's, life's busy. And the options are we can take that on, we can extend that, we can wait for them, or we can try and find someone else in the community that will help them out, you know? Like, there's no reason that a pull request should be one person. It doesn't have to be. Um, one of the great things I love with a contribution day is is uh, pairing people up. If it's your first time contributing, then pair programmer. You know, get together with someone that maybe has contributed before, and and let them teach you. You know, um, and so like that's why I quite like the project side of stuff, like the longer running projects, like the MSI and the, the bulk API, is because it has that kind of team feeling, that support feeling, and um, so people are working together a bit more than an individual contribution. Um, but if you if you want to contribute and you've got a friend that also wants to contribute, then together put together a pull request. I think that's a great way of doing it, and that also helps with if one of you is busy or helps take the strain. If you meet up in person and you know you go around to their house and you contribute together at the house, then great. Then stay, have dinner, watch a film, whatever you know. Socialize, add the social aspect aspect to it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's funny. I actually, um, I have like this big screen TV where I do my computer stuff and I have, and, um, I have like two seats. So I think it'd be kind of dope if to get somebody to come into the, to my, my man cave here and just like do some pair programming or whatever for a few hours. Good, um, man. Be kind of fun. You could live stream. Could live stream it. Yeah. <laughs> I still want to do that. I still, honestly, I still want to do like, uh, a live stream where I take someone who has never contributed before and get them to do a contribution in a, Dude, that's in a great a, idea in a live stream, but you've got to get the right person, the right environment, that kind of thing. I know Vinay who's in the chat. We talked about this in India about doing like live coding style stuff. And, um, I didn't want to step on toes and stuff like that. You know? Um, but I think like a contribution live stream would be quite, it's a challenge for us to make sure that our processes are correct. Right, so that, right. You know, like, what's the who is it? The the Fox News guy. Like, we're just doing live, you know. Oh, oh, yeah, Bill. Uh, Bill, some, some. Yeah, Bill O'Reilly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do it live. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like, how good is your process? Are you confident that you could live stream someone yeah. doing their first ever contribution and get it done in like an hour and a half, two hours max, sort of thing? You know, it'd be cool. As a you, what would be cool would be get like a php developer maybe like somebody that's pretty pretty senior or or very you know very comfortable in php mm -hmm. and very like confident to do it live and then uh introduce them to uh, you know and maybe maybe even like somebody that's skeptical like from the m1 days like oh magento sucks or whatever and get them to to do it 
do it live uh, on M2. Uh, that could be, that's a cool idea, man. But that, that takes a certain kind of person. Like you're saying, yeah. you don't, like, the only people that have rejected you so far are British, right? <laughs> yes. In, like, there are death, and it's the same thing I was saying, like, not everyone should be doing everything. So, Kalen, you should be getting rejections for live streams, <laughs> but not everyone should right. be on a live stream, man. Right. right. Uh, and that goes for any kind of content. I always felt bad because I didn't blog. Like, yes. I always felt like I was a bad developer because I didn't blog. And yes. I've got a blog there, and I think it has one post, maybe. Um, and it has a, a bedtime story that I wrote. Uh, and that's about it, you know? And it's like, <laughs> I feel, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, so my, my, my youngest, right? I was training people at the time, like training new devs. And my youngest was just getting into reading. You know, all kids' books rhyme, right? And so I just had this idea to do um, like a kid's book, but with tech stuff. And so I wrote this like rhyme thing and it's awful, but I just posted it. It was my kind of, oh, just post it, just post it. So, yeah. That's cool. But I always feel bad that I don't, I don't blog enough. I tweet too much. I don't do enough videos. I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. am, I, am I inclusive enough? Uh, do I cover, you know? Yeah. It's, it's like whether you're doing stuff or not doing stuff, there's always something to feel guilty about or yeah. something like that. It's, it's this weird dynamic. And it's funny that you mentioned the, the blog thing because I always think of you as somebody that's super active in the community with the uh, Stack Exchange Day that you uh, mm -hmm. had organized and stuff. And so when you're saying like, oh, I always felt guilty I didn't blog enough, it's weird because I always think of you as being super active, super out there, and yet, you know, feeling you all, like... You always think you can do more. Yeah. You know, there's, there's always, there is always someone that you will be looking up to in a positive and a negative way. You know, there's always people that I look around and go like, man, they do it. Like they do it. Well, like biggest thing, I really am disappointed that I couldn't keep going on with making page, but I can't go, I can't go back to it now. It's too late. Right? Sure. You can. Sure. You can. <laughs> so, you know, but that's why I did the live stream with the Engcom where I met the maintainers because I'm like, well, right. ah, it's major engage. And uh, yeah, and that's the thing is like you have an idea and and you try it in one format and then you kind of reinvent it and and, and you always uh, my thing is like what, like whether you're building a product or or trying something trying mm -hmm. to put something out there you always learn something from it and you, as long as you keep going and tweaking it you know you keep kind of improving and finding different ways to yeah. to implement. Okay things and and you learn way more from screwing up than you do from success right um and like mage engage was awesome it was great for a time i don't think i'd go back to it though leave it as it is you can't get better than interviewing yourself right <laughs> and then there was a lot of so like people maybe you don't like it's a five minute video and it would take me about two days oh my god it. And um, just because my brain, my brain is the sort of like, I, it's dangerous to live inside my brain. I tweeted this the other day, but I was just so worried about what other people would think. What you know, um, most of them, I wouldn't even watch back. I would just like just post it live and just let the world decide if it's good or bad because my brain would automatically think you could do better, which probably I could do better, but. And you always get better incrementally, but yeah. yeah, you can be very harsh on yourself. Um, sometimes it's really hard for me to watch stuff back too. Like I'll just be like, oh, I don't need, I already saw that. I don't want to see myself. And, um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, but, and it's, if you're watching this and you've started something and you think, how do I keep doing it? You don't need to keep doing it. If the timing is right, you don't like, I do feel bad that I stopped Mage Engage, but at the time, I it was a good decision to stop it. You know, it meant I had more time with my kids. It would take up like a whole Sunday afternoon to do Mage Engage, to record, to to whatever. And I had at that time my youngest was how long ago was it? Yeah, my youngest was just born. 
that's the reason I stopped is because I got a baby, you know, and now I'm like, he's three and I'm like, nah, I don't need to go back. Yeah. yeah. Time's passed. Yeah. So I find sometimes you pick the craziest times to do a bunch of extra work. Like I did that, uh, when I ha had a new kid and, and, uh, started a business and, um, it's, it's, it's funny how sometimes you pick the weirdest times to do things. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. uh, well, David manners, this has been a lot of fun. It's been fun to catch up. I appreciate uh, the time. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for popping on. Um, any last, uh, things you want to share, point people to plug, uh, so I would love to plug uh, community engineering. Um, if you want to get involved with contribution in any form, the best place to start is our Slack. Sorry, Kaylin, we're taking over Slack. It's all good. It's all it's good. All right. You're doing a beautiful uh, job. If you want to get into that, go to tinyurl.com slash engcom minus sign up, and that'll get you in. Or message me and I can get you in. It's open, it's free for people, and it's a great place to start contribution. Uh, other than that, Mage MH and everything Rebecca's been doing with mental health stuff, that's that's a big thing. Um, and my favorite, favorite conference is the Mage Unconf. And that's coming up, I believe, in October. It's in Cologne here in Germany. It's about an hour on the train from my house. If you are anywhere in Europe, get yourself to the Mage Unconf. It's, uh, I first met Fabian Blechschmidt at an Unconf, not a Magento Unconf, just a PHP Unconf. And uh, some of the best friends I've made in this community were through the Unconf, just because it's less business, it's more relaxed, it's, it's just a great place to meet people. And if you feel like I don't have that many connections in the community. Get yourself to an unconf and you'll leave with like a hundred people that you'll happily spend any time with in my opinion. Nice. Yeah, I've always heard really good things about the unconfs. Unconfs. Yeah, there's the Dutch one as well. I've never been to the Dutch one. I'm sure yeah. it's slightly different. Yeah. So check those out. Also, real quick, uh Vinay mentioned in the chat mage to kata katas youtube channel we were talking a little bit about testing so that's a great uh, resource to check out if you're looking uh to to get get into testing a little bit more so check that out thanks everybody for tuning in we'll be doing actually my guest for tomorrow had to cancel last minute so we're gonna have tj on mm -hmm. and uh e-commerce holic that should be a lot of fun so we'll see you tomorrow and uh thanks again for tuning in